Our criminal law expert, Ken Lawson, has been in the profession for 30 years. He has represented some big-name clients, but his career took a major turn. Professor Lawson is standing by with Howard to share his story. Thanks, Bridge. Kathy, uh, here with uh, Mr. Lawson. And, you know, part of the reason that we, we bring you in here is because you have a little insight and expertise into the world of law. But today we're going to let people get a little insight in, into your life. Yeah. And this is something that you have come to embrace because it's important. It's a part of your story. Uh, take us back about 15 years ago or thereabouts. You hurt your shoulder, and that kind of led to what became a, a pretty serious downward spiral. Yeah, I hurt, uh, hurt my shoulder lifting weights, tore my rotator cuff in the year 2000. I went to the doctor and was prescribed uh, oxy, uh, well, actually Percocet and then eventually Oxycontin. I got addicted to opiates, and we see the opiate epidemic that's just uh, bringing havoc across the nation, and I became a, a drug addict. This is something that happens to any man or woman in any walk of life, rich or poor, no matter what the profession. Um, and for you, it had a, a, a nearly fatal effect. It, it destroyed your career. It destroyed your life. Yeah, I mean, because my tolerance just kept growing. So I started off doing two or three pills so I could sleep at night. To, right? And then eventually, after a while for the addict, um, we continue to use more and more and more. Uh, and so that tolerance continues to go up. And so what we see now is eventually, because the pills are so expensive, uh, young people are going towards heroin. Um, and, it's, and it becomes an illness that uh, I wouldn't wish upon my worst enemy. For you, it resulted in losing your job, being disbarred, and then ultimately ending up uh, in a federal prison. Yeah, as a drug addict, right, the most important thing to me, like an alcoholic, right, because I was an alcoholic and a drug addict, is, is getting what I need so I don't get dope sick. And so uh, I'm getting prescriptions illegally. My last couple of years of using, my habit was $1,000 a day, right? I had to pay a doctor who, who did give me illegal prescriptions going to pharmacies with prescriptions in other people's names, uh, get the money from clients that I'm supposed to be paying, uh, wreaking havoc on my family, driving with, and I got five kids, and I love them to death. But as an addict, I would not hesitate to put them in the car and drive just to go get uh, drugs. Your wife got a job in Hawaii. You came here 12 yeah. years ago, and that gave you this opportunity to turn everything around. You were given some good opportunities, and you've used it to your advantage. And now this is part of your story. You share it with the faculty. You share it with new students who come in to hear your lectures. You say it's, it's made you a better professor, a better person. Yeah, the, the, the worst pass that I thought, the pass when I was in detox and I woke up my first morning being sober in over a decade almost, uh, when I woke up and I felt all that guilt, I remember asking my counselor, how do you get rid of all this guilt? Aren't you, uh, how do I get rid of all this stuff that I did in my past? And he said, if you stay sober, your past is going to be your greatest asset, that all the bad things you did will help somebody not end up the same way you did. And I started doing that. And they said things like, why don't you give without expecting nothing in return and see how your life turns out that way. Uh, and I started doing those things, not because I was trying to get good, because I just didn't want to drink and use anymore. And it's been 12 years now. Uh, life has come full circle for you. Uh, for all of us who walk through life, what should we look for? Because opiate addiction affects anybody, and if you see something, somebody may not cry for help, but they need it. Well, and most people don't, you know, even if they think you have a problem, you know, they don't want to ruin your job. They don't want to tell on you. So most people, well, you know, how, why don't you just get it together? You know, and I, as a drug addict, would tell you, okay, I'm going to quit on Monday. You know, no reason for you to go get me in trouble or anything like that. But trouble is what got me sober, right? People walking around and kind of knowing something's wrong and not saying anything or enabling me uh, by saying, okay, well, I'll, I'll give you some more money as long as you promise me you're not going to do it. And the drug, I'm going to manipulate. I'm going to tell you whatever it is that I think you need to hear to let me do what I need to do. So bottom line, if you see somebody, you got to get involved. You're saving their life. Yes. Yeah. It, it may be painful, right? But, but again, that's the only thing that I know is pain. I, pain gets my attention. Well, appreciate you sharing your story. Appreciate you being here to give us the legal insight. Anytime, Howard, you, anytime. Uh, Ken Lawson, UH professor, thank you for your time thank and you for both. sharing your story. We send it back to you guys.